What up, what up, what up, TIA Marketplace? Um, so today I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys about um, why I left the States to move to Kenya and how I did it, right? Because there's no point in telling you all why I did it and then not giving maybe some idea of how I did it just to, you know, give you guys an idea. Maybe it might sink something different in your mind, might make you think... But, you know, our life, life is long, life is short, right? But we only know we got one in this present life, right? And we got to do all of those things that we should to live our best lives, right? I'm out here living the life and building the dream and maybe kind of listening to what we talk about here might give you a little inspiration. So um, if you ever watch any of my other videos, uh, I've definitely mentioned in there why I wanted to move to Africa in particular, right? Like, uh, I am a lawyer by trade in the States, and the place that I used to work at, Legal Aid Society in Manhattan, they used to offer us a one-year sabbatical to go and do whatever you wanted to do for every, I think it was like every three years that you worked, right? Which is a great perk, especially if you are somebody who likes to take advantage of all of these types of benefits. So I knew when I spoke to HR and they said, this is all the stuff you gonna get because you guys ain't gonna be nothing but broke government lawyers. Uh, we've got lots of other fun benefits for you. So I knew right when they said we had a sabbatical, I was definitely going to be taking that full year sabbatical and you could do anything that you wanted to, right? And even if you, let's say you wanted to practice law, as long as you got permission from the office, they didn't even care if you even did that, right? So it was a great way for maybe somebody who was trying to uh, test out private practice to see if it was for them. That would be like a good way to do it. But anyways, for myself, I knew that once I took that sabbatical, I was definitely going to be doing something different. Um, by the time I had even taken that sabbatical, I had been practicing for double digit years and you know, your girl was tired. You know, you kind of look around at your other colleagues and you're looking at them and you're like, if this is what it's going to look like in another 15 years, I know I got to do better. I know I can do better. And if I wanted to do better, I would have to do it myself, right? You can't like wait around, sitting around for somebody else to do anything for you because if you are, you're going to be waiting forever, right? Right. So um, anyway, so I ended up taking the sabbatical and um, I knew that I wanted to come to Africa in particular. So my father was born in Lubumbashi in DRC Congo, that is down in the south. And my mom was born in Riru, Kenya, which is just a city just a little bit outside of Nairobi, Kenya. And both of them were born and raised on the continent. And then my father, who was older than my mom, moved to Poland to study for his PhD in metallurgy. And my mom won a scholarship while she was in high school to go to medical school in Poland, in Krakow in particular. So, you know, imagine like <laughs> you go from high school straight to medical school, right? Like nuts. Um, so anyways, my mom moved out to Poland. She spent like one year in a city called Łódź where she learned Polish. And then she moved to Krakow to go to medical school um, where she met my father. And then they had me and my sister Giselle, and then, um, you know, life continues on. So anyways, I know for myself as kids, my mom used to send us to Kenya every single summer, like every single summer, all right? And why am I saying it like that? Because back then, the city didn't look like the way that the city looks now, right? The city was, I mean, it's always been really pretty, like Kenya is really, really pretty. Uh, the trees, the topography, the weather here is great. Now, we're in the winter. Yes, it does get cold in Africa, y'all. Uh, I've got on sweatshirts. I got the heater on because it is cold up in here. Nairobi is uh, one of the top 10 highest capital cities in the world. Uh, so for those of us, you know, who grew up at sea level, moving up here, you know, this altitude and everything changes some stuff. However, the weather to me in Nairobi is perfect. It is like the best weather, like 72 degrees, light sweater at night type weather. It's perfect. Anyways, I digress. So when we were little, my mom used to send us out here all the time with my grandma, with our grandparents. And, um, you know, 
you're gonna do like you know vacation stuff so you know how in the states our summer vacations used to be like three months long so literally for argument's sake let's say school got out may 15th my mom had us on a plane may 16th if school got back in august 15th we were back in miami august 14th okay she did she was like get out <laughs> get out of my face leave me alone and so we were over here um when i was a kid and i used to come out here um like I said, there wasn't really nothing out here, right? All of your cousins were in school because the school system is different out here than what it is in the States. So the timing and the dates are all different. So every time we would come here, generally you would either play with like the house girls kids or if they went on, if your cousins and them on the weekends and then we would always do one trip to the Mara to see the migration, to see all the animals, to do safari, uh, or Samburu, Savo, some of the, any of the other parks that are around here. And then we would always do another week on the beach, on the coast in Mombasa. Uh, Mombasa is like, temperature wise, it is like Miami down in the south. It is warm, it's beach, it's coastal, it's all the things. The Indian Ocean is all the things. When God was creating it, whoo, he said, Indian Ocean, Caribbean, y'all get all the love. And then the rest of y'all can get like some sprinkled here and there, right? And any of those, you guys are going to try to tell me anything in the Atlantic. And yes, Miami is Atlantic, but let's be honest, it really is the Caribbean. Don't talk to me. The Atlantic is trash. But again, I digress. So anyways, we were kids. We would come out here all the time. And then when I was about 15, uh, I was like, please don't make me go anymore. Please don't make me go anymore. And I literally begged y'all. I begged to go to advanced math summer camp. And would y'all believe that my mom actually was like, well, I don't know, like literally was going back and forth. And it's like, mom, how many teenagers actively ask to go to math summer camp? And not only no regular math summer camp, it was advanced math summer camp. Like, I wanna go to school instead of going to Kenya because there was nothing to do out here. Like your girl was bored, okay? I have read every single 007 original Ian Fleming book I have watched every episode of Dexter's Laboratory. Dee Dee. If y'all watch Dexter's Laboratory, you know. Anyway, so we stopped. And then you know how life is. Like you get older, you learn things, you move around. Um, as some of y'all know, I travel a lot uh, before COVID really grounded us. Um, I've been over to well over 85 countries, um, still growing. I want to see the whole world before I die. So that is not something it is on pause. Uh, we're doing it, but you know. COVID, and now you know we started a business, and now y'all know these first few years, it's real sacrifice because this is not easy work, y'all. Uh, and if you guys have started a business, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So anyways, I knew though uh, when I was going to take my sabbatical, I really wanted to not be in the States. I wanted to be somewhere else. And so for me, I thought, let me go back to Africa, to Kenya, because I wanted to know what it would be like to live and work here right? Because anytime you go anywhere where you're traveling, traveling, visiting, short term, it's not the same experience as when you are actually living in a place and are really here, right? Um, in one of my other videos, I kind of give you guys a breakdown of the five things that I really need to know for a fact that I can live in a place real quick, swimmable ocean, all night city, diversity of people, diversity of food, and a major airport, which Nairobi hits all of those. So anyways, I just really wanted to experience what it would be like to live and work here, right? Because both of my parents were born and raised here in Africa. And so I wanted to feel closer to them. I wanted to, you know, feel part of being a natural global citizen that I am. So anyway, so this was an easy choice. I originally moved to Malawi, to Lulongwe. I stayed there with a girlfriend of mine and her husband, and I was originally helping them with their business. I thought that it would have been a good idea for me to do because obviously I have never worked here and I have not lived here. So I really wanted to get an idea of what would it be like to do your day-to-day -day working here, living here, you know, having a real schedule where, you know, it's not like you're just leisurely waking up whenever and somebody's making you a coffee, but it's like, we got stuff to do. Um, it was fun while it lasted, but I couldn't do it. A uh, long way compared to Nairobi. I mean, there's nothing out there, like for real, for real. Everything is run on generators. All you ever hear at night are just generator sounds. Um, it's a really small capital city, just to give you an idea. They don't even have a movie theater. Now, I know for some of y'all, it's like, what you talking about? Like, 
but you know you can tell the, the the quality of a city by the diversity of the things that they can offer you as a person right and I mean watching a movie is the best way to waste your time right so anyways there was nothing there and it was really like okay um uh, my friends also had a different work style than I did which did not work for me I am a very persistent and tenacious person. I am a person where if I come up with a plan and a schedule and an idea of how I need to get it done, I'm going to do it. These guys were a little more relaxed, you know. They were a little more like, yeah, it'll get done, Rita, don't worry. I just don't run myself like that. I don't conduct myself like that. So instead of ruining the friendship and all of that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and go on and get out of here and I'm going to go to Kenya. So I ended up going to Kenya. And like I said, I stopped really coming out here when I was around like 15 because there was really nothing to do. I think since from 15 to when I finally moved out here permanently, I think I'd only come back out maybe two times. Once was for a wedding real quick where we stopped in the country, did the wedding, and then we went to uh, Zanzibar. If you guys have not been to Zanzibar, beautiful. Gorgeous. So anyways, we, we left. So I haven't really been out here. So when I came back, uh, I stayed in Luangwe for about four months and I had a 12 month sabbatical. So I did not want to forego the other nine months because that was kind of the thing that you could always go back to work, but whatever time that was left on your sabbatical, you could not um, go back, right? Like you couldn't go to work for a month and then go back and say, oh, I got nine more months. That's not how it works. So anyway, so I came to um, here. So I came to Kenya and I sat here. I rented an Airbnb because I didn't want to stay with my family because I really wanted to just see kind of like, you know, what was it like, right? So I would find like different restaurants to go to, bars to go to, go hang out and do all of that. And then that's kind of how like the ideas in my mind started to come about how I wanted to create something here. What kind of a business did I want to do here? Uh, we originally moved into beverages and now we've kind of um, expanded that line. And so now instead of having just nutritious sodas, we also have other wellness products um, that we also are selling and distributing, all private label. And it's just been like going nice. You know, I'm like cautiously excited, but you know, the challenges are real. Anyway, so that was kind of how I ended up getting here was by taking the sabbatical and moving here. And why I ended up here was, like I said, I just really wanted to be connected to my parents. I wanted to really understand what it would be like to, you know, live and work here. I definitely did not come out here to save an African, okay? Uh, I don't think that there are any Africans who need to be saved. I think that is kind of one of these old school colonial mindsets that everybody has to come here and do handouts to everybody here. I think it's bullshit. Africans are more than capable of creating and doing everything on their own. Um, do I think that there needs to be more examples of it for young people to see? Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here doing that. But it's definitely not something that, um, that an African needs, right? Like we can all stand up on ourselves. So when people are always asking me here, it's like, oh, Rita, did you come with an NGO? Or did you come with this government? Like, did you come with the US government? Did you go with this? And it's like, no, I didn't come out here to save not one African. I came out here to create something for Africans by an African for other Africans, right? It really was important to me to be able to do something, right? And to be able to feel super connected in it. So that is kind of the real motivation for why I moved out here. Um, I've always known I wanted to do something that was amazing and different. I always know that uh, if I have to fall back and go back to being a lawyer, I can. I keep all of my uh, licenses active. I do all of the requirements that are told of me, but it's not happening, y'all. I'm out here. I'm staying out here. I I love my life here. You know, I'm not saying that there's no challenges here. You've definitely heard my other videos. But overall, this place is great. Like Nairobi is really, really great. I'll do another video just on kind of like how they receive us. And when I say us, I'm meaning like black American people. And then I'll tell you some of the stuff that I've heard that they think about black Americans, which has been kind of an interesting thing. But anyways, just to kind of give you an idea of uh, why I left and how I did it. So like, subscribe right down there tia marketplace let me know in the comments if there's anything that y'all want to hear about talk about um i'm here for you guys i want you guys to learn and come come out here and come help me too you know all right talk to y'all later bye